I had gone to visit a friend who actually happened to be Paul Farmer, the main character in a previous book of mine called Mountains Beyond Mountains. This guy was there, Dale, and he told his story. It was a spooky and strange story. It's about a young man in the middle of um, his medical training who gets caught up in history and makes a long escape to New York City where he arrived with $200 in his pocket and no command of English. Well, the kindness of strangers. That certainly was true in Dale's case that he encountered it. This baggage handler who sort of appeared out of thin air at JFK and got him through immigration and helped him find his way around New York for a while. So he was assailed both by memories and also by his present circumstances, which seemed to have consigned him always to being a grocery delivery boy, camping first in abandoned tenements in Harlem and then in Central Park. He on his grocery delivery rounds ran into this ex-contemplative nun, Sharon McKenna. The first time I met Dale, he was approaching the church with bags from the grocery store. I asked him where he was from, and he said, Burundi, and I thought, if you've been through that, and that's the way you're carrying on, bless you. She basically set out to find Dale a home, and she found this couple lived down in Soho, Charlie and Nancy. The first time I met Dayo was when he came here for dinner with uh, Sharon McKenna. Charlie kept calling, have you found a place? Have you found a place? And I still hadn't. The decision we were going to make uh, would uh, change our lives very, uh, very fundamentally. In the end, they had to make this enormous leap of faith. I had a study in the middle of the, the uh, flat we turned that over to, uh, to Dayo for his, uh, his house. It was filled with books. And when Dayo saw that, he said, there are more books here than I have seen in Burundi. So I invited him to meet me by the Lions on uh, 42nd Street and 5th Avenue. And we went into the New York Public Library. It was and is a magnificent place. So he lived with us for uh, seven years while he was going to Columbia University, went to uh, Cambridge to um, take pre-med courses at Harvard University and uh, to audit courses at the Harvard School of Public Health. And it was there that he met Paul Farmer. The report that Deo brought back to us was, this man is going to cause me a lot of trouble. He is uh, back um, in medical school. What he was doing was something really quite remarkable, which was to raise the money and the enthusiasm among Americans mostly, and build a clinic and really a public health system in a, in a small rural village. I still wondered how he did it, because I remember visiting the site of this clinic in 2006, and it was just a pile of rocks then. In its first year of operation, saw 20,000 different patients. Some were even coming from other countries. And when Deo asked one of these people why he had come, he said, to see America, which is, I like to think, a misconception, but one that we Americans might want to try to live up to. <laughs> Absent the American experience Deo had, he would not have been able to do the wonderful things that he has done with Village Health Works. Charlie said something fascinating to me once, something that I had been turning over in my mind, and about seeing so many Africans doing the lowest level jobs. And you think, what kind of human potential is not going to be realized, is not going to be recognized? And ever since I've met Deo and, and, and done this research, I've, I've looked differently at the strangers that I've seen.